It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opil in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Hello and welcome to the Cyrus community. This is Business Unusual. Wealth transfer is our topic and we are looking at how do we get this wealth transferred from the wicked to the just. And who are the just? Who are the wicked? Who is the sinner? And who is this godly person? Now we've looked at that in the last two conversations. So please, if you've not watched, it will be good for you to do so. Now in our last conversation, we talked about Daniel chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. 22. Yeah. This is where the Bible talks about God changing times and season and talking about God removing kings and setting up kings. And we talk about he gives wisdom yeah. to those who are good or those who are wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Now we see that um, the Bible also in that scripture talks about he reveals deep and hidden things and he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him that was our scripture we continue with this because this scripture clearly shows us that wisdom and knowledge from god are the primary keys to unlocking kingdom riches and wealth so when we talk about god is giving us power to create wealth we are simply saying god is giving you wisdom he's giving you knowledge and of course his wisdom knowledge comes with joy yes. now when we look at the ungodly or the sinner it always talks about the wealth of the wicked always is full of sorrows yes now for me yeah. i think i've reached a place where i say my friend i have seen wealth with joy i have seen wealth with uh, with sorrows Sorry. and i prefer with joy oh yes by <laughs> far with so, joy. so this God's is not yeah, so this is not the old dichotomy of of poverty with god and wealth with the devil mm. no 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 it's called wealth with god the outcome and wealth with the devil yes. the outcome that's what we're discussing here now we, we when we looked at daniel we were looking at what we called other witnesses having looked at ecclesiastes too yes other scriptures that clarify this re reality that god does not give us wealth but he gives us power <laughs> that power is translated as wisdom knowledge and joy we'll mm. keep repeating that oh yes Just to get it now we're going to look at another scripture in proverbs now what i like about this particular scripture like we said in the last conversation that we will probably have to do a whole um, session just on wisdom. Oh, yes. Why do we say that? Because there's a whole environment in the book of Proverbs where wisdom, wisdom is given a personality. Mm. Yeah, Solomon gives wisdom a personality. Wisdom is personified, so it's speaking for itself. Mm. Wisdom is telling you how it operates. And we're going to look at one of those scriptures where wisdom speaks for itself. Riches and honor are with me, mm -hmm. and you are in riches and righteousness. Proverbs 8, 18 to 19. So wisdom, is, what is wisdom telling you? We kept saying that God does God do? He wants to give you wealth, what does he give you? Wisdom. Wisdom. Now, wisdom. Now, <laughs> wisdom is telling you, riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. Huh? Why these two scriptures are important is two things. One, riches and honor. That means there can be riches and dishonor. Mm. Mm. Where wisdom is concerned is riches and honor. honor. And then it goes on and tells in verse 19, enduring riches and righteousness. Mm. Here's a scripture where riches and righteousness are connected because God gives it to the righteous. So it's not only saying to us that you get riches and righteousness together, but it says enduring. Mm. Enduring. Not passing by. <laughs> not passing by. So if you have this wisdom from God, you not only get riches and honor, it still does not affect your righteousness. In fact, it enhances it yes. and it is enduring. Mm. This is the kind of wealth we're talking about. 
Powerful. So, so in the same way, we look at yet another scripture that shows us how wisdom and knowledge from God are directly connected to having access to pleasant riches. Pleasant. Pleasant, pleasant is the key. riches. By wisdom, a house is built, mm -hmm. and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. Listen to this. By wisdom is a house is built. I know. I don't know about you. When I grew up in the early church season, this scripture was only quoted halfway. By wisdom, a house is built. Yes. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled. Nobody jumped to verse four. Why? Because that way, we will only know we need knowledge to build the church. Mm. We never even thought it was a house, your own home, your family, your life. You know, the house is a metaphor for many things. A household really is a family, all right? Not a building. No. Not a building. No. Your life. No. <laughs> so even if you wanted to transfer this scripture to a building, you still can't beat it. Mm -hmm. It says, by wisdom a house is built. A house has to be built by wisdom. That's a picture of an architect. You realize an architect gives so you a So even if you want to take it to a building, Even if you take building. it to a physical building, it okay. will work. And by understanding it is established, the architect must understand this kind of thing building we are building. Is it a house? Is it an office block? Is mm. it a, 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 a gated community? Whatever it is, it has to be built by what? Wisdom and established by understanding. What does that mean? We must know what kind of climate, what kind of environment, what will it withstand? And then by knowledge, the rooms are filled. Interior designers, you need knowledge. Not guess what, you don't just throw things around in your house anyhow and think they will be nice. And if you do that, it will be filled with precious and pleasant riches. So this can be used, are used at any level, it remains the truth. So that, these are the scriptures that are telling us that God always, always has merged in scripture wisdom, knowledge, wealth, riches, pleasantness, joy. All these are kingdom realities. Let me look at uh, Ecclesiastes 7.12. Yes. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. Imagine that. The advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. So it's telling you for the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. Who are we telling? The oh. people who think money can protect you. Oh. The protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. That's very funny to think about because many of you are thinking, you know what I need is money. No, it said it's like that thing you're thinking it is. No, you'll get it from wisdom. But now there's an advantage of knowledge. And that tells you that wisdom preserves the life who has it. So money stop. cannot. <laughs> I think we need to go back to that money scripture mm -hmm. where it says that the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. Mm -hmm. If I don't go to the depth of that statement, I will think the Bible is telling me endorsing. money protects, wisdom, wisdom protects. protects. Let's get either. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you have to read, that's why we said you have to read it completely. It says, I can almost say it's saying, but the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of, of him who has it. Who has it. Therefore, telling you money does not. Protect so, when it says it is like the protection of money, yes. we think money protects. We yes. think the same way we think money protects. Wisdom protects on a higher level. Is that exactly. what you're saying? Exactly. That's what it's actually saying. Because money is temporal. Yeah. Many of us think money protects, but money cannot preserve the life. Mm. So, notice we've moved from protection to preservation. Mm. The okay. advantage of is knowledge. That at, at a certain level, Money and wisdom will seem to be in conflict that it can protect you. In other words, God is telling you, even when I give you wisdom, even you the believer, and you make money, don't shift your gaze mm. from the wisdom to the money, thinking mm. now it is the money that will protect you. And he said he'll give you wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Yet you see the scripture saying yes. the advantage of knowledge yes. is that wisdom, notice how now yeah. again they are combined. Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom preserves. preserves the life. Huh. Meaning, as long as you have wisdom, you will be preserved. I think we have seen that wisdom and knowledge yes. from God yes. preserves. Absolutely. We need it. Yes. We can't walk without that. And it is required to access riches and wealth yes. and to bring us joy. Yes. Maybe now the question we need to ask, what is wisdom and what is knowledge? I think most of you will be sitting here and saying, okay, fine, we've had Fine, we agree. It is wisdom yes. and knowledge that we need from yes. God. And that's what you're calling the power, the yes. power that God is giving you. Yes. What is wisdom and what, what is, is knowledge? knowledge. And yeah. I think to add to that question, we have to add the question, how do we receive that? Mm. 
Mm. And how do we apply them? Yes. So even if we identify what wisdom is and knowledge is, mm -hmm. if we don't receive and apply them, yes. it has done us no benefit. All right? So let me just make a few statements to kind of help us calibrate that thought. Okay. Based on what we've said so far. It means that wisdom is, is the cause and wealth is the effect. Remember here we're talking about wealth being the measurement. Mm. Not so much wealth being the power. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you have wisdom, this kind of godly wisdom and knowledge, mm -hmm. there'll be an output called wealth. wealth. There'll okay. be an effect, we'll see it. Again, you must understand that therefore this wisdom is supernatural. Okay. While this particular wealth we're talking about is material. Okay? So it will be supernatural and material. Cause and effect. So the actual transfer of wealth from the wicked to the righteous is not robbery. Mm. Mm. It's no magic. No. Okay. It's not God suddenly taking money away from the sinner and giving it to you. <laughs> no. It's actually through a strategy called wisdom and knowledge. Okay. Let's That's go where the back. Let's go comes. back to that issue yes. of wisdom of cause and effect. Yes. We receive wisdom from God. Mm -hmm. That wisdom yes. for it to be seen that you have actually received wisdom from God, yes. it will be seen externally. Exactly. I think you need to go back exactly. Ooh, slowly. Okay, <laughs> slowly. Guys, listen to this. <laughs> Why are we insisting on this? We have to remove some dichotomies. Yes. We've come from a place where whenever we perceived or saw what we believed was wealth, we could not track wisdom from it, from God. That's been our journey. If you begin to describe the people you call wealthy, mm. you'll probably not be able to showcase or show us where the wisdom came from. That is why so many books are written on how to be wealthy and nobody gets it right. Yeah. You know why? You can't get it in a book. It is wisdom from God. You get it from only one book. Not many books. Mm, mm. All right? Yes. That's one problem. The second problem is that those who have claimed to have wisdom. Yes. Not what I've just said. Mm -hmm. Claimed to have wisdom have not showcased wealth with it. Mm. That's where our dichotomy is. So lies. our confession where we say have the wisdom of God. Yes. I walk in the wisdom of God. I have the mind God. of Christ. Oh. We have not yet showcased so it means that if we understood those things, what we are saying is, if the word is true, and the scriptures in the last conversation, we have gone through them thoroughly and oh added yes. some here. Oh yes. Then if the scripture be true, then there is no way you can access this wisdom and knowledge and not walk in the outcome called wealth. Hmm. That's what we are saying. So God, I think here we have to say this, God wants to give you power. He says, yes. actually, do not forget I'm the one who gives you this power. Yes. Why am I giving you this power? Where you come to a place where you have no scarcity of bread. Exactly. Where you come and say everything that you own is being multiplied. Yes. Why am I doing that? Notice every time man has encounters with God, yes. God will leave that man wealthy materially. Exactly. Materially. Yes. So in our wealth transfer series, we want people to come to this place of saying that, listen, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God becomes the outcome is material increase. Exactly. Can we agree to and that? Let me answer mm -hmm. a religious demonic question. Okay. How do we know if we get all this wealth, we will not backslide or get into trouble? Because wisdom and mm. wealth will maintain the wealth it creates. Mm. Wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. The process of wisdom and knowledge, mm. the process you need, the process you go through if you truly access this from God. Because the wisdom changes you. Yes. The knowledge changes you. Mm. Therefore, you'll be able to manage the wealth without any stress, no mm. matter how many billions it gets to if you come through this path. And that's why Proverbs 18, 19, we've just read, yes. it says that there's enduring riches and righteousness. There is. That's the so, key. this kind of wisdom of God. Yes. Remember, you received it because you have a relationship with God. That's the journey. All right? So, if you come to that place of knowing, listen, what you see around me, only God. There you now, go. how do you walk away? You must be a genius. And, and also, you must be a genius yes, and also, when, when you grow yeah? and realize that what you carry internally 
produced what you have externally oh. there is no way what you have externally can have more influence over you yes. than what you have internally that is why we always say when it comes to a place of understanding that the power is within me the power is resident in me i'm not scared of giving i'm not scared yes. of that will draw, will make me backslide i'm not scared exactly. that when i give out i help out people i will be drained no there's a wisdom and knowledge inside of me that i know listen this is like a like a tap yes. or a dam yes. that is so full, Always. I'll just be overflowing. Yeah. I'll just be overflowing. Yes. The wisdom and knowledge of yeah, God. Yeah, and that's why the yeah. Bible, the, again, there's a proverb that says, the fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> his money. A fool and his money, his money are mm. soon parted. Mm. Why is he a fool in contrast to the wise? Not the stupid. The fool. A fool. The fool is the one who assumes his power got it and also assumes money is everything yes. all i need in this world is money when i want this it's money and the wife says listen all i need in this world is wisdom we see that with uh, exactly. solomon and why is that wisdom fool? is what i need why is a fool and his money parted because yeah? he thought the money was the key mm. once it is his capacity to maintain it no matter how much of it comes to him yes over time it will totally get lost because he has no wisdom and knowledge on how to multiply it, main, increase it and maintain it. So the fool is not a stupid person. Those no. are two different kinds of He's people. He's one who is not wise. It's somebody who is he not no wise. has no access to the wisdom and knowledge of God. Oh. Right? So the actual transfer of wealth here we are yes. saying that it is that is coming from the wicked to the righteous is not through a, a magical thing, yeah. but it is through strategy. Yes. And that is where when you talk of the wisdom and knowledge of God, of yes. course it calls us back yes. to say, listen, you'll have to think. We yes. can't just sit and just pray and hope things and, will and, happen. And let me just say here that the wisdom of God is a verb, not a noun. Mm, mm. It is a doing word, mm. not a speaking word. So when I receive wisdom, I Yeah, do. when I tell you you have wisdom, wisdom mm. is not told, wisdom is shown. Mm. When you are taught wisdom, we only know you received wisdom when you apply it. Mm. In your activities, we see the wisdom of God. That is In your activity, we see you have received an instruction. That's it. An instruction is the wisdom and knowledge of God. That's it. So that when God, it's not a complex thing. When you say, have you, do you have a proceeding word? The proceeding word is the carrier of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And that's why we say it. When God tells you, look at the Bible and say, God told these people. Mm. For example, when he told Judah. Yes. Put the, the Jehoshaphat. Yes. Put the worshippers in the front. That was an action. That was an instruction. Wisdom. But the instruction carried wisdom. Watch me. Go. When those guys are in the front. And, and I, by the time I'm saying, other ones were shouting. Yes. But when God says, put them there, he's telling yes. you. That's an instruction. But in the, wis in the instruction, it's my wisdom, There's always wisdom and my knowledge. When it was time to cross the Jordan, he said, let the priests go first. Instruction. Instruction. But there was wisdom instruction? in it. Did the wisdom make sense? Oh, the the river is already overflowing its banks. Yes. It is a time of a flood. Hmm. Then you're saying, let the priest go first. The Bible says, when the feet of <laughs> the priest touched the water, it parted. Not when the word that the hmm. water will part was released. Hmm. So the word is released, yes. but until you do. When the feet touched, not hmm. when the word was spoken. Action. So there's a word that has been spoken to you. For a long time. Is that why your feet have never touched? Hmm, that's why the Bible talks about the things of God or of the kingdom of yes. God is like foolishness. It's like foolishness to those who are perishing. Yes. Because somebody will be sitting there telling yeah. you, so you're telling me you'll be given power to create wealth. So yes. the power will come via what? Keep via cable, it. via a fiber, wifi. or via what? Why it's foolishness? But yes. you who believe God know one thing. There's an instruction I'll receive from God. In the instruction is the wisdom yes. and the knowledge of God. There you go. So I love what you just said. And yeah. you need to say that in this conversation yeah. that we've said it before. Yes. The wisdom of God is seen in your doing, in not in your, doing. your speaking. So uh, wisdom is applied. Hmm. Wisdom is not Powerful. said. That's why as we, well, like we keep quoting, we'll come back and discuss wisdom. One of the places wisdom speaking for itself says, by me kings rule. Mm -hmm. That's action. That's ruling. Action. That's wisdom. Okay. All right? All right. So now there's another important statement that we could easily miss in this scripture. Mm -hmm. I want you to reiterate it. This scripture in, in Ecclesiastes. For, the, for to the person who is good in his sight, he has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. I want to focus on the phrase <laughs> has <laughs> given. Has. Past mm. tense. Powerful. Not will give. 
I didn't notice that. He says to the person who is good, he has given. If you go back to all the scriptures that we've read in the last conversation and now, you notice one interesting thing. They all either say he gives mm. present and continuous or he has given past tense. Mm. It's interesting that basically mm. the scriptures are telling us wisdom oh, wow. is all around us. Mm. We God is continuously giving us wisdom. Because his joy is There's for no you to There's no lack life. of wisdom. You are his son. Okay, you know sometimes we say, do we ever sit down and ask ourselves, here I am praying, desiring, and yes. aligning myself, and asking God, get me out of this. And we always wonder, God, why are you taking forever? And yeah. God in this scripture is revealing to us that yes. wisdom has already been given. It's already been given. That means it is our eyes that are looking at the wrong exactly, thing. Exactly, because we don't want wisdom. No, sometimes we don't even know yes. that wisdom is what we want to receive. Exactly. Yeah. Our background doesn't build that into our mind. And listen, this is profound. Mm -hmm. It means he has already given. And continues. That's why Jesus wow. could make. Wow. That's why Jesus could make the, the the bold statement to the devil: "Man shall not live. Is man alive? Man is already here. Yes. By bread alone, but by every word that proceeds, he is never stopped. <laughs> Wait. Man shall not. Oh, I love that scripture. <laughs> man shall not live by bread alone. alone. Okay. But by every. And we will be talking about bread alone, guys. This conversation yeah. of wealth it's transfer. Coming. It's going to reveal to us why we are stuck in a position. Yes. Bible says you don't live on bread alone. Yes. Does that say you don't eat bread? No. No, you have said bread. alone. But it doesn't say you live on that alone. But it says you live on the proceeding word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It even tells you where it comes proceeds. from. Proceeds. Listen, when I say something proceeds, it's like a tap. Yes. It keeps coming. So we've just talked now that when God gives you an instruction, yes. a proceeding word, mm. in that word is wisdom and knowledge. So God is telling you, my friend, mm. you don't live on bread alone. Yes. You live on the wisdom and the knowledge and the joy of God. Why? Because that wisdom is what proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is a sad thought yeah? that God has always been giving us. Mm. That means, let me work it backwards. Okay. If wisdom he has given to him who is right and is continuous and mm -hmm. remember two conversations ago we said the righteous is not the good behaved is the correctly positioned mm -hmm. see many of us sit here thinking because i behave very well <laughs> and i do not sin and do not abuse anybody mm -hmm. and i love everybody how come i have not received this no he said he doesn't he said he didn't say he gives it to the faithful he gives it to the fruitful mm -hmm. Listen carefully. Yes. Fruitful means one who is correctly positioned to carry out the mandate, mm. not one who loves him. You know, it's funny <laughs> that this scripture did not say he good. gives wisdom to those who love him. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I thought that's what he would do. No, no, no. Those who love him, he loves them back. He's mm. a good God. And he provides for those who love him, but wisdom to those who are correctly positioned with him. Why? Because they have a mandate to carry out. Now what is profound here, it means one of two things. I probably love God, but I'm not rightly positioned. Mm. Okay. Remember when we look at, okay, finish that thought yes. maybe. Yes. So it means that if he gives to he who is rightly positioned, it means I am wrongly positioned. positioned. He continues giving. Mm -hmm. It simply means the river is flowing. I'm just far from the river. So as I keep coming closer, I, will I get it. the word of God that adjusts me, adjusts me. Every adjustment is a step towards the river, yes. towards a place called good. Yes. And remember when God was creating in Genesis 1, yes. we see him create and then say it is good. It is good. Meaning when he gives you wisdom and knowledge and joy, when you take that instruction, he says it is good. Yes. He gives to the man who is good in his sight. Yes. Who is the man God calls good? It is not the well behaved. It is the well aligned. Exactly. And listen, we also said before, when God says it is good, it doesn't mean he's admiring himself. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is good. Mm -hmm. No. Mm. The word good there means profitable. Mm. The word good there means prosperous. The yes. word good means they are with great outcome. So everything he made was profitable, mm -hmm. was beneficial, yes. and would be able to bring great outcomes. So a man who is good in yes. his sight, yes. what makes him good? 
God is not a respecter of persons. Yes. So he cannot say these are the good and exactly. these are the bad. Good is a position. Good yes. is an alignment. When you come to this alignment called, and God looked and said, it is good. Yes. That position called good, when you stand there, the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, and the joy that follows. Let me tell you how powerful that concept is. Yes. And let me digress a little. Mm -hmm. A story is told about a deceptive group of people called the Gibeonites. Okay. These guys here that Joshua is marching towards the land. These guys probably hear the prophetic word. These guys are going to take over everybody and wipe them out. Anyway, mm -hmm. God is with them. Mm -hmm. So these guys disguise themselves. They are from very near. Joshua is about to enter their territory to conquer them. But they become smart. They come and dress up as if they are from very far. They have been <laughs> in trouble. And they come and beg Joshua and says, you know what, we've been in so much trouble. We've been attacked by so and so. They are lying, by the way. Well, that's the wisdom of man. Yes. <laughs> that's what they are And I want to here. show you how deadly it is when somebody mm. aligns, even if they are not mm. lovers of God. Yes. Okay? So they say to Joshua, I want you to covenant that you will protect us when you come to us. And Joshua does. Mm. Here's the interesting thing. God had put a mandate, whoever blesses you, I will bless. God had given a mandate, whatever. In other words, the power of attorney was with Joshua. Yes. He was presenting God and he could give command and could determine who will be preserved under God's covenant, mm. even if they were outsiders. You have authority in the earth. Thank you. I've given you These authority. These guys smartly aligned with oh. this covenant. Do you know a day came, Joshua discovered that he had been deceived, but he had to protect them. Mm. He held the covenant. Remember what you talked about the in the last... power of right standing. Remember what you talked about in the last conversation? Yes. When you talk about the word of the king is law. It's law. Joshua, right your word is law. That's it. <laughs> That's how it was. So, so you're yeah. saying Joshua has a prophetic word. Yes. He pulls them under the covering of that prophetic That's word. It. it protects a people yes. who have used... You know well, what Jesus said? The children of this world yes. are wiser in their generation exactly. than the children of light. So we see that principle applied there. Yes. Guys, these guys will kill so us. So what they, do we do? Yes. Let's try and so align. They had no direct covenant with hmm. Joshua, with God, with God. But they had a covenant with Joshua. Joshua that gave them access to God. Now, let me give you a prophetic picture before you go into his deception, blah, blah, blah. Let's think differently. Okay. Joshua also means Yeshua, Jesus. Hmm. It's a picture here. It's a picture. We might not be that smart. We might have messed up. When we come into covenant with mm -hmm. him, we access the covenant of God and get protected even for what we're not deserving. Mm. That's, That's right have. standing. That's why God is telling us, I'll give you power. Not because you're good, you came into a right standing. They came me. into his righteousness, into Joshua's righteousness, mm. gave them protection. So if you talk about it, uh, that this whole thing means that you already have been given and yes. continuously God gives us the wisdom. Yes. So where is the problem? Uh -huh. Where is the problem? Let's look at some scriptures that begin to highlight the problem. Okay. All right. Proverbs 28, 26. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Interesting. Whoever <laughs> trusts in his own mind. In other words, wow. what is trusting in your own mind? Thinking you're smart. So that's the wisdom of man. Yeah, yeah. thinking you're wisdom smart. You know how to work things out. Yes. You're educated, people are impressed by you. You mm. trust in your own mind. mind. Listen, this is the issue. Listen carefully. Not just he who believes, he who trusts. The in other words, trust. I think in the, in the last conversation we spoke about a double minded man. Where mm. your mind, your, your, your words say one thing, but your behavior is different. That means you trust your mind over everything else. The Bible says, he who trusts in his own mind is a fool. Now, the word fool in the Bible, in Proverbs, is not an abuse. Mm. It is a state of being. Let me explain. He who trusts in his own mind is unwise. <laughs> he has no wisdom. wisdom from God. But he who walks in wisdom, not might, will be mm. delivered. Mm. So if you want to be delivered today, what do you need? Wisdom. And you need to walk in it, not know it. Walk in it. Listen Do again. It. Please notice mm -hmm. every time wisdom is mentioned, it is a doing. verb, a yes. doing word. So what does that tell you? It tells you he who walks in wisdom, not he who has wisdom, will be delivered. Let's mm -hmm. another scripture. Proverbs 10, 21. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. 
Now listen to how powerful this statement is. <laughs> the lips of the righteous, remember they've been given what? Wisdom. So their lips feed. I need to see the connection. The lips of the righteous, the wisdom they have, when they speak that wisdom and mm. anybody follows it, they are fed. Okay, wait. <laughs> the lips here is a picture of they speak yes. wisdom. Yes. Anyone who takes and does is fed. Does not lack. But fools die for lack of wisdom. Not lack of money. Mm. Lack wisdom. of wisdom. Let's go another scripture. Isaiah 5.13 Therefore my people go into exile for their lack of knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude is parched with thirst. Go read it in many versions. Paraphrased, my people, therefore, therefore, why? Therefore. Why? Therefore, because they lack wisdom, because of their lack mm. of knowledge, my people go into captivity. Mm. Exile is simply captivity. What does it mean? What the, why does exile and activity sound, captivity, captivity sound the same thing? Mm. Because exile is funny. People who are in exile may not be at home, but they are not in prison. Okay. <laughs> you are not home. But you are not in so prison. So you not thrive. Yes, you are in, in another nation, you are seemingly free. There is a level of limitation. Yes, you move around, but there are things you will never access. Mm. And while you are there, even an honorable man is famished. Meaning, even though you should be living in a better status, you live like a pauper. Wow. And the multitude, so imagine the honorable men are finished, are famished, and the multitude is parched with thirst, not even water. Why? Because of their lack of knowledge, not because of the devil. Mm. And here we are evil. talking about the knowledge of God. Yes. How to do in your exactly. environment. How do I do this? How do I carry out this? How do I activate this? I need knowledge. Mm. Lack of that knowledge. Exile. Now Activity. imagine, famished. do you realize they are called his people? Yes. Uh -huh. There's a reason I'm asking that question. Oh. Do you know they, know they are called his people? Yes. Meaning they know him. You're not talking about people who don't know who God oh. is. They know him, but yes. they lack knowledge. So you can know him and lack knowledge, you'll be famished. Oh. So you are his people, but you're famished. You're his people, but you lack water. There you, go. you are his people, you lack knowledge. And that's what we are saying. When Jesus said, now today I think finally, <laughs> guys have understood Matthew 4.4. 4. And remember, Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy. Yes. I took you through all this For to you let to know. you know that man does not live on bread alone, but on the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That word carries wisdom and knowledge. And with that, you will not go into exile. You will not be famished. Yes. You will not be parched with thirst. Yes. You will not lack. Why? You have wisdom and knowledge that supersedes the knowledge of a fallen world. And guys, famished is just a glorified word for starved. <laughs> so don't think famished is this very interesting spiritual okay. activity. And their honorable yeah. men will not starve. Yeah, simple. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> So, so closer examination <laughs> of such scriptures yeah. will tell you that the problem is with us mm -hmm. and not with not God. Not with God, yes. The problem is that. So many times we keep asking God, where are you? God, when will you show up? Oh, I'm waiting on God. God is saying, I've been sending wisdom ever since you've been around. But, you are asking for something different. But maybe also the question we need to ask then, and mm. I'm asking on behalf of many, yes. well, then what makes us reject mm. what should be readily available because if you yes. say that the wisdom of god god talks about proceeding word yes. the word if you talk of proceeding word it means yes. present and continuous okay. god is talking yes. he's giving you his wisdom yes. and knowledge yes. then where i mean what all makes right. us reject let that? me start now yes. by giving you knowledge okay all right because that knowledge we not reject. will help you to understand that question okay okay the first thing we need to know if you didn't know and if you knew, you need to remember that God will never ask you to do mm. anything mm. Mm. that he did not create you with the ability to do. Listen to that. God never wakes up, finds an arbitrary person, hope that person will finally comply with what he wants. God will never ask anybody to do something that then they have to go and start looking for other support and systems and what to do. Mm. That's why we usually know we have a problem. You can't come and tell me, you know what? God told me to start one, two, three, but now what is missing is... Uh, mm. I don't have this. I can't ah, do this. God didn't tell you. Mm. 
And that's where yes, we see. That. He didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we see the twelve tribes. Yes. Each tribe has. For example, exactly. we talked earlier about the tribe of Judah. Judah. Now, when we say tribe of Judah, yes. more so they are musical. Yes. But can we also see yes. that in the realm called music, yes. they still have different different activities within it for a tribe. So, do, do you know God could never have told Judah to make bows? Mm -hmm. Never. Okay. It was not going to happen. It's not a musical instrument. It's not a musical instrument. Okay. Even when they are told to go to war, they would be told to create harps. To go to war. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> when they needed to... Uh, 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 ex what do you call it? To, to exercise a demon? To, to exercise a demon. To exercise a demon? Yes. He would still be told, take the harp. Take the harp. Take the musical yes. instrument. He did not tell David, listen, Saul has a demon, I want you to lay hands on him. And call that demon out. No. Play the harp. God, it doesn't matter what he's sending you to do. He'll still use the, what he created you to do. Mm. He never changed it. When it was time for Moses to go, he said, what do you have in your hand? A rod. Mm. He didn't bring him a sword. Ho, ho. What tribe do you come from? What is yes. it that God has already put? What is the ability God has already placed inside of you yes. when he makes a demand on you? When the wisdom comes and the knowledge comes and there's a demand for you to do, exactly. it is based on what is you already have. Yes. I love that. This, God yeah. will not? He will not ask you to do anything mm -hmm. that he did not create you the ability to do. So if you That's have right. an instruction from God yes. and you have no ability to carry out, that is your own God. Mm, that's not an instruction from God. Go no. again. God always, always uses what... Listen, God is not confused. When God comes to ask you for, to do something, He knows who He's asking. He created Him. This is the problem. Mm. You see, we have all grown up in households where it was irrelevant what you're skilled at, you did what you must do. You see, when we're in the church, remember yes. we're talking about the era of the kingdom business reformation, exactly. the believer in the market space. Yes. When we were in the church, yeah. in the church you will find somebody who is from the tribe of Judah being told, come and pray, tribe of there Levi. And every time you're like, okay, seriously, I'm learning how to pray, but I don't love so it. So you adapt. You adapt, and we adapted into many things. No, that's our life. When you went to school, what did they tell you? Mm. These are the skills, not this is who you are. Okay. These are the skills you need to work in this space mm -hmm. so that you can get money so you can live. That was your training. Yeah. So from the word go, you are never demanded on to do what you are. Now because mm -hmm. you never used what you were, you were called dumb. You were or called a foolish. student. Slow. Mm -hmm. Incapable. Why? Because the gods of this world were making demands on you mm -hmm. on what you were not created to do. So, and when you failed, they called you a mess. So in this case, you're being called, you're a creative. Yes. But you're being put in the academics realm. Exactly. And you're like, you'll not thrive. Yes. Is it that because you're dumb? No. Nobody should call you that. And there yes. are many people today who walk around with the labels of I'm a D student, a yes. C student, because you are examined on a level realm or whatever that you are not uh, built for. And to make it worse, yeah? the teacher who taught you is not a teacher. Mm. They are a musician. They are a businessman. They are something else their skill was. But the only available, available. job... The only available opening to make a living was this. Woe be unto you, because mm. you became the tool of meddling. Mm. That's, that's <laughs> also, when you talk about the enemy, and yes. you say that the devil is not joking with people. Yes. Even in our education, we don't see him. Exactly. Where we say, wait a minute, who comes up with this system mm. that judges men and labels them for life? It's almost there like you you've been given a life sentence. Yes. Because you're a D student, you yes. can never do one, two, three. And that, Yet, yes. in your calling, yes. in your ability that God placed in you, you God go. is telling you, my friend, the minute you step into what God created you for, yes. the world stops that's to it. watch you. And that's why we always always get into a problem when God speaks to us. Because mm. when God speaks to us, he speaks to the person he created, not the mm. person you have become. So your instruction is addressing the person that's God why, That's why when you hear you say it's impossible. Mm. It can't be done. Mm. It's not this, it's you not that. You become somebody else. Listen, when God says to, to, to Moses, I want you to go to Egypt, Moses has excuses. He doesn't know what he was born for. I can't talk. He was born as the deliverer. Mm of the nation of Egypt, his name, Moses, drawn out of the water. 
so that he can draw them out of Egypt. Yes. It was his DNA. When he said he cannot speak, at the end of it all, Aaron is going to speak first. Yes. Doesn't matter. God didn't ask you to go speak. God asked the, you to go get them out. You do you. <laughs> what is not you, don't worry, God. Yeah. Because when Aaron now spoke, it was he okay. spoke from the position of Moses. But it's what Moses did he spoken. say? He said everything Moses said. Yes. So he still spoke. He did through Aaron. Anybody, that's the principle. When Gideon is confronted, he's called by who he is, mighty man of valor. He is confused by who he has become. The list of the list of the list. Hmm. That's why sometimes we're saying, why are we unable to hear or to receive? Because mm. God will not address your problem. Mm. He'll address your solution. Okay, that's he, Gideon. Yes, he'll speak to you. Yes. That's where our problem is. And when he calls him a mighty man of valor, sometimes you feel like correcting God. God, God, God. Wait, you know wait, 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 wait. Do you know who? This message was not meant for me. Exactly. Why I'm the least in my family, the least tribe the least clan we are the least of the least yes. and god is looking at you and saying listen when i created you in my list when i said it is good yes. there is no human that i created to be the least of the least out of the 12 tribes you always say this that if you look at the children of israel god picked them as a particular people in the earth so that through them he can show how he needed the know. world to operate yes. so we don't say they are special people yes. no god needed to take a people out Use them to show the rest of humanity how God operates. True. And that is where he starts by showing you there are 12 tribes and each is unique. And in their uniqueness, depending on what is happening in Israel, yes. one rises up. Exactly. When you are going to this position, this tribe goes fast. Yes. When you are now talking about the Issachar, they come fast. When you are talking about war, the Benjamins come fast. There you so go. it depends with there is no competition. No. So yes. I think for us, and, and it's saying. beautiful to understand this, and that is why. Let me say something about a prophetic word. Yes. Again, we have got all sorts of connotations for this behavior. People tell me, "Oh, you know, they gave me a prophetic word, and I had confirmation in my heart." Stop. <laughs> say again. <laughs> Gideon had no Gideon had no confirmation. <laughs> Mo Moses had no confirmation. Mm. Let me explain. David something. had no confirmation. Yes. Listen to this. When it is a, an exhortation, not a prophecy. Mm -hmm. The prophetic also has a grace called exhortation for building up. Which means you're going through a thing and God brings you an encouragement. The encouragement is prophetic because it is aware of what you're going through. Or you've been going through this and the word comes and tells you, do not worry, whatever you're processing, it will work out. Mm -hmm. Do not worry, whatever you're going through, it will be good. You know, that, is, you do not, you, that one you'll get a witness because it's what? An exhortation, an encouragement. Yes. You know the principle of the word encourage? It means you are moving forward, you are losing courage, so mm -hmm. you need more courage to move forward. But a prophetic word, an authentic prophetic word, is not a prophecy to God. It is a prophecy to you. <laughs> Why? God is telling you who you already are, ah, yes. who is lost inside all these things you've gone through that over time will begin to come out and function properly. So that becomes your guiding principle. Your prophetic word becomes like a mirror. That's why you hear us saying we have a prophetic register. It is helping us step into the fullness of who God always said we were. God is not predicting the future. <laughs> God is telling us what it looks like. It is us who are adjusting to it. Mm. God will never ask you to do anything that he did not create you with the ability to do. Go back to your instruction and ask yourself, what is my instruction? What is my proceeding yep. word? What is it that I need to do? Hello and welcome to Business Unusual. In this season we call the Kingdom Business Reformation. I'd like to invite you to our open meeting where we'll discuss two very interesting pathways that could be existing even in your own world right now that we need to create a clear distinction between. The one place is called the Christian in the marketplace. The other place is called the Kingdom Citizen in the market space. Now these two dynamics may sound the same, they're not. And they're, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, they are informed by two different paradigms, two different ways of thinking. And those two dimensions of thinking will determine whether the kingdom of God has an impact in the earth or not. The Christian in the marketplace, on average, is somebody who's surviving, barely holding out, 
always hoping for a miracle, for a divine intervention, for something to change. In fact, they're almost holding on as long as they can and eventually many times end up exiting and saying, I'm going to full-time ministry. Because that space is hostile, they are not designed to operate in it, the most they think they can do is survive it. But when we talk about the kingdom citizen in the market space, they are the divine intervention. They are the change you're looking for. They are the journey process that functions. And if we understand that, then we'll understand the actual movement of kingdom economy and what we talk about in terms of kingdom impact. So we need to be clear in which of these two dynamics are you operating from. What informs you? And we'll be discussing a core fundamental problem in the thinking processes of the Christian in the marketplace that makes them ineffective in the very space they are in. So they always have to run back into a space called church and then go out there and weather the storms. But when we talk about the kingdom business person in the market space, this person can thrive, function, grow, impact, make change. And there are certain keys, tools and principles that determine how you function in both. So please join us and ask someone to come with you. This could be life changing. It's been there since the foundation of the world. Reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly, using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opil in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of Mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Keep it kingdom, keep it pure.